Hi, I'm Myra Walker with UT Extension, the Family Consumer Sciences Program. And today what I want to talk with you about is Crock-Pot 101. Yes, the temperature outside is getting a little bit chillier and crock pots come in handy all year round, but especially during the colder months. It is wonderful to walk into the house when you come in in the afternoons and there's a hot meal waiting. So, Crock Pot 101, that information can be found on our UT Giles County, UT Extension Giles County website. There's two sheets that go over several tips for using your crock pot. I will cover a few of them today, but let me encourage you to go to that, our site, UT Extension Giles County, for uh, all the information about Crock Pot 101. First of all, if you're purchasing a crock pot, it's always good to buy one that has a liner that is removable, the crock itself. We also have plastic liners that are available now that helps with cleanup and anything that's easy to clean is always um, good. And when you're dealing with a crock pot, the food in the crock pot can become quite warm. So when you get ready to actually serve your meal and whatever leftovers you have, when you have a whole lot of something that's hot, instead of just putting it in the container that it was cooked in, such as a crock pot, go ahead and break that recipe down in smaller containers. And since we've got the holidays coming up, when we start talking fall, um, you're going to have probably more food in the refrigerator and if you do, anytime you have something hot, break it down into smaller containers and either put it in the freezer or store it in the refrigerator, right? refrigerator that way. And that helps cool things off quickly and you get out of the danger zone with your food. And while we're talking about crock pot 101, when you're actually turning your crock pot on as you start whatever recipe you're doing, it's always good if you can leave that crock pot on high for an hour simply because your temperature will be safer faster. In the crock pot, one hour of high is equal to two hours of low when it comes to the temperature. And you're trying to achieve 140 degrees or higher uh, for your food items to be safe, especially raw meat. So keep that in mind. If you can turn your crock pot on high for an hour of the first amount of your cooking time in your recipe, that's going to be a little bit safer. And as always, it's good to read your crock pot manual, but if you misplace it, remember to look at crock pot 101. Crock pots were designed for cooking meats, cheaper cuts of meats, because if when you're cooking in the crock pot, you're cooking on low, slow heat, and many times your cheaper cuts of meat will become tender in the crock pot where they wouldn't in some of the other um, ways to cook as fast. So just keep that in mind with your crock pot cooking. Crock pots can be a good way to put a meal on the table. All right, with Crock Pot 101, I'll needed to give you a recipe that I enjoy on a frequent basis. It's tortilla soup and it's chicken tortilla soup. And one thing I like about this recipe, I've shared it with a lot of people and I've got, I got it from, I don't know where I got it from, but anyway, I've used it a lot. You can always take a recipe and make it your own. But one thing I like about the tortilla chicken recipe is that it will fit in one bag and it can be given as a meal if you want to take a meal to somebody or if you're going on a vacation and you're going to stay where they have a kitchen, you can take your first meal with you and that's very convenient and it's cost efficient as well. So this recipe you will find it beside the crock pot 101 information. Um, basically you take two cans of chicken, you take a corn, can of corn, can of chicken broth, some water, you can use um, chili beans with sauce, or not, depends on what your preference is. Some black beans, of course we have options of no sodium. Many of us get too much sodium. They say everybody gets too much sodium. One of the things we will have coming up after Christmas is take charge of your diabetes. And one thing that we always talk about is sodium intake. We're supposed to go with 2300 milligrams a day is the recommendation, which is about a teaspoon. You think, oh, that's not too much. I don't even get that much. You'd be surprised. Processed foods 
make a difference when you start calculating the sodium you get every day. So it's good we can take a recipe and make it our own and reduce the sodium either in our chicken broth or corn or whatever. Moving on with my ingredients, we've got tomatoes. We've also got ranch dressing and taco seasoning mix. And in the recipe, it tells you how much. You can use the whole envelope of your taco mix or you can use a portion depending on how you want to do it. But you can fit it all together in a bag. And once you get it in a bag, I'll just pop this right in because it's very convenient to have on hand because all you've got to do is wipe the lid of your can before you open it, have a can opener, and then pour it into either your stock pot or your crock pot. So I've got all this in there that would, it would take to make the chicken potato soup plus some chips to go with it. The nutrition uh, facts for this recipe are on the uh, crock pot, beside the crock pot 101 um, information. So there you have a meal to hand off to someone else for them to enjoy during the cold weather or any time. Chicken tortilla soup can be good.